Hey everybody, Tanya from Shooting Star SVG back and today I am going to go through some very simple tips and tricks for you guys to start selling your SVGs and digital products on Etsy or whatever platform you decide to choose. Um, I just kind of wanted to start out with what programs you may want to use. I'm going to be doing a video and you're going to see me looking at the screen, so just keep that in mind, right? I'm going to go through several different things to kind of get you going, things that I wish I would have known when I started. So with that being said, if you haven't already, please go ahead and click on like and subscribe below. That keeps me motivated to continue making these videos so that way you guys get all the tips and tricks that you need to grow your business and change your life, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started. The first thing I am going to talk about is programs that you can use to design your SVGs. And the first one is, um, in the, is a free program called Inkscape, and you can do a ton of different things with this. There are a lot of really good tutorials out there, and I'm currently working on some um, to post up on uh, YouTube. I do have one on how you can create very simple SVGs and I'll post that right up there for you guys to check out. Um, and it basically just goes over how you can create text-based SVGs and I'll get into some deeper tutorials as I have some time to make content. Um, the second one is GIMP. This is also free and this is another um, editor that you can use to make vector files. Um, or sublimation files or whatever type of printable that you're trying to go after. Okay, so these are two very good free resources for you to make your own unique content. Um, another program that I do have on my computer is Affinity Designer. This is also a very good tool, very similar to Photoshop. If you don't want to pay the prices for uh, Photoshop, which I say that, but I meant to say Illustrator because Photoshop does not make SVGs. Illustrator, you can make SVGs. So if you're not looking to pay um, that monthly sub for Illustrator, then Affinity Designer has a lot of good tools that you can use. And I will just go open up um, a tab really quickly so you can see um, what Adobe Illustrator kind of looks like. So um, again, you can pay $20.99 a month to get Illustrator, and this is a phenomenal phenomenal program to work with. Um, I had it for a while, but I do a lot of my stuff out of Silhouette. So another option you have is to just design directly in Silhouette Studio, which is what I normally do. Um, I find that I can create a lot of my stuff in here without having to go to another program. But if I'm doing something a little bit more intricate, I tend to lean towards Inkscape, um, which I feel very comfortable with. So I do a lot of work in Silhouette Studio. You need the business edition to export SVGs, which is kind of a little bit of a pain, but it works well for me. So those are some options that you have for creating your products for free or a little bit of a cost. The designer edition of Silhouette Studio, if you use the link below, I'll have a coupon code through Sling Design for you to upgrade if you already have it. Um, and it's also good to have it so that way you can test your files. So that kind of goes right into the design aspect of um, your work, right? So you want to make sure that you're not infringing on any trademark or copyright. So I'll post a link in a video up above so that way you can understand how to search the trademark database because one of the biggest mistakes I see people making is, um, you know, it's kind of like that they see other people doing it technique, right? So I'm just going to open up Etsy real fast and show you. Disney SVGs. How many freaking Disney SVGs are on um, Etsy? And these shops get taken down all the time. Yes, they make a ton of sales, um, but you will get caught and you can have legal enforcement action taken against you. So um, I do not endorse anybody who deals with trademark and copyright. That is one thing that you do not want to get involved in. Um, I will post a link in the description below about a girl in Canada who got a cease and desist from Chanel about some items she was making on Etsy and it turned into like this big viral thing. 
it was pretty bad. Anyways, so when you're designing, stay away from trademark and copyright, okay? Give me a huge, 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 huge hamper. Um, I would say too, when you're starting out, just make sure you create a schedule for designing. I tend to do like maybe, I don't know, three to four designs a week if I can. Lately, I'm not going to lie, it's been maybe anywhere between three to ten designs a month just because I'm not focused on the design aspect right now. I'm more focused on providing content to y'all. So just stick to a schedule. It's not going to be like some crazy cash cow right away. But if you continue to post and you continue to provide content and value, then your customer base will see that and you'll get more visibility in the search of Etsy, okay? Um, make sure that your designs are very unique, okay? Um, you kind of want to stand out from the crowd. You can create something that's on trend, but I guarantee you that you're only going to get like a quick pop in sales and then that's it. And then what do you have to back up on? So you could make a very viral trendy product and have like, you know, three or $400 in sales, but then you don't have anything else in your shop and it's like, now what? So make sure you're doing your research. You can do that by um, looking at other um, things that have the, let's see, the bestseller badge um, to kind of see what's selling or what people are searching for. But you can also use the tool in SE Rank, um, and I'll post the video up there for you guys to check out on how you can um, search for uh, trending SVGs. So you can maybe make some designs around those topics and I can give you a boost in sales. Um, and then make sure your cut files are clean. So a lot of people go into this and they have no idea how to design an SVG. And so they just slap a bunch of stuff together and then um, think they're good to go, but then they don't f remember to weld or create a compound path. And all this could sound Chinese to you. And if it does, figure out what it means. No, I'm just kidding. If you go to this video here, um, I posted on how to design a very simple SVG in Inkscape and kind of go through what it looks like in Silhouette as well as Cricut Design Space and what looks good and what doesn't and what you need to make sure you have for that to make sure you have a very clean cut file. So it's important you have a clean file. And I'll go through some more of that like later on. But um, just to show you like this one example, and of course this doesn't have like any cursive text, but if you look at this, and of course my silhouette studio is all kind of jacked up right now. Um, all these red lines is where it's going to cut out, okay? And you can see that everything is very crisp and clear, right? And there's nothing that's going to, like, cut over itself or anything like that. So you just want to make sure that your cut files are very clean and concise and straightforward, right? The next thing that is super critical, and this bothers me when I buy files, because not only do I make files, but I do regularly buy files because there's just some stuff that I think looks really good. Make sure you're zipping all of your folders, okay? So if you're providing like four or five file types, which is good to do, um, you want to zip them in a folder. So for me, I provide SVG. I provide a DXF file. That's an AutoCAD file because um, Silhouette Studio Basic Edition can only use DXF. They can't use SVG. So you're missing an entire market if you don't provide that file type, okay? I provide JPEG and I provide a PNG with a transparent background. So when I save my files, here's, um, I, I sort everything by kind of uh, the topic, I guess you could say. Um, and you can see here in the folder that I name it. It has an original name. Okay, that's very important. Don't just name your files one, two, three, four, five, because if people buy a bunch of your stuff and then all of a sudden they have like 20 ones, they're gonna be like, what the, what the, what? Almost said a bad word there. So do that, right? So I save everything and then when I'm done, I go in and I select the files and I zip them. That's what I do. It works for me. All I'm saying is don't name your files one, two, three, four, five. Actually name it what it is. That's important, okay? And then zip it together. Um, again, that DXF is important. Some people also provide EPS, which is an Illustrator file. It's an encapsulated postscript file. You just wanna research like what your audience is gonna be for your printable and what the uh, 
best types are going to be. But I do recommend um, packaging everything in a zip file because it does make things um, a lot easier. All right. And then we can get into like the display aspect of things. So you want to make sure that you have really good promo images. Um, currently hem hawing on if I want to rebrand again. Um, when I first started, my colors were horrendous. Just nothing looked good. Um, it was just, it was just bad. So um, I'm just going to click on this one. We'll open it up. You can see here that I have a sidebar that has, you know, my color scheme and my logo. We have the design right slap in the middle. Okay. I'll be doing a video on how to make sure that your thumbnail size are the appropriate ratio too, because that's very important when you're showing up in search. And you want to kind of think about what's going to set you apart from everybody else, because people are going to be scrolling. You want them to stop and be like, oh, okay, that looks good, right? And sometimes um, they can't get that from just a design on a, a page. So another thing that you can do is provide mockups, which I have in this one here. Um, and you'll see a lot of designers provide mockups as well. So you want to make sure that you can do that. And I will post a link down below to what I use to create mockups because all of these, there's six of these in total um, for this bundle. That took me about five minutes to create with Placeit. So I'll drop a, I'll drop the video up there, but I'll also drop the link in the comments below so you guys can check that out. Um, also, what I see a lot with that people do when they first start out is they watermark the bejesus out of their stuff. Don't do that. I mean, it just really takes away from the design. And sometimes people can get confused and think that the watermark's part of the design and then it's just a hot mess from there. So don't do that, okay? A lot of people say watermark. No, don't. If somebody's going to steal your stuff, guess what, Karen? They're going to do it, okay? So just keep the watermark out of it and design. People are crazy. And if they're going to steal your stuff, they're going to steal your stuff. It sucks. It happened to me. It happens to a lot of people I know. Um, reality of the situation is, is that the sellers, or I'm sorry, the buyers of your products will outweigh the people who are scummy. Okay. And they always get caught and we have a good group of people. We all look out for each other. And so we make sure that, um, uh, you know, if somebody is throwing our files around that, uh, we got our back. So don't, uh, don't, don't just don't do the watermark thing. So we covered mockups. We covered no watermark and we covered branding. Okay. So biggest thing on the branding is make sure your colors are good. I'll tell you when I first started mine were black and yellow. Talk about a strain on the eyes. Um, now they're a lot softer, but I'm thinking that I just need a refresh and a change. So don't be afraid to rebrand. We all do it. It happens. And feel free to, you know, ask for advice on your branding itself. Um, I'm just going to kind of scroll through here and see if there is some good branding of people I know. Okay, Glitter Moonshine. Yeah, yeah, Danica. She has really fantastic branding. And she kills it. I mean, she's probably one of the top SVG sellers out there. Um, and you can see she has S this in her bundle with her logo. Um, and I mean, she just does a really good job with her branding straight up. Um, so keep that in mind, you know, go, go, go on Etsy and look around and see what other branding looks like and go on some reputable websites and see what that branding looks like. And it's really going to help you out. I'm telling you. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is pricing. Y'all are selling your files for way too little money. Okay. That was the first feedback I got when I started my shop. And I wish I would have known it at the beginning because I was straight up selling my files for like $2 and 50 cents. And this lady was kind enough to go through my shop and she's like, girlfriend, you're selling yourself for way too less. She's like, you should at least be at $3 or $3 and 50 cents. And like, don't sell yourself short. So I agree. There's a lot of competition out there. But don't sell yourself short. Most SVG files sell between $3 and $5, depending on the intricacy, okay? And if you go and look at my shop, most of the stuff, I wonder if I can sort it by price. Yeah, 
most of my stuff, okay, so you have 10 files that are $1, right? And the reason why is because every month I do 10 files for $1. And it's just a thing that I've been doing for a while, and I will continue to probably do it um, for some time. Uh, just for the heck of it. You can do that too. I'm telling you what, you don't make jack diddly off of a $1 file after all of the fees and taxes and transaction fees, okay? Um, so the lowest thing I have here is $3. The reason why is a very basic tax. Most of my listings are $3.50. And obviously the higher priced listings are the bundle listings with nothing over $12, okay? And these are for some of the bigger bundles. Um, and you can see some of the smaller bundles are priced lower. Um, and then, you know, it, it really just... I don't want to make you guys see six scrolling around too much, so I'm trying not to do that. But, um, you know, it, it really just depends on what kind of what kind of price you feel comfortable with. I always say a good price point is three dollars and fifty cents for something that's very basic text. And then you can kind of go up from there. I try not to price any of my files more than uh, four dollars and fifty cents or five dollars because I sell bundles for that price. It just doesn't make sense for me. I know I still have some uh, listings on Etsy and design bundles lurking around that I just haven't had the time to go back and edit them. So I'm actively working on that. So just keep that in mind. Don't sell yourself short, right? So when you come over here onto Etsy and you search, you can look and see that some of these people are just selling Look at this. This is a bundle of, uh, I don't know how many designs. Let's see if it says it. No, it doesn't. For $2.50. They might sell a lot of those and they might make a lot of money. But then nobody's going to go back and buy these individual files. So you just have to be logical about your thinking in that regard. So I will show you guys um, a post that I put up on Facebook because I was going to go log into my back screen. But I, I never feel comfortable talking about my earnings. And so I try not to to post that if I don't have to and like this listing just freaking killed it so my sister and I were talking the other week and um you know I list these individual uh you know nutrition facts that's like my thing right I just decided one day I'm gonna do a bunch of nutrition facts so I decided to bundle the uh zodiac sign nutrition facts because people were buying a lot of the single files right here here's one um, so I took all 12 and I bundled them up and I posted them on design bundles. Now on Etsy, I'm, I'm, I'm selling them for 12. If you go over to design bundles, I think I have them at like 40% off right now. I look at this thing on the screen. I sold this thing <laughs> for 97 times, 97 times. When I started pushing a bundle, I had 27 sales. I will tell you right now that that has sold a ton more times and I've made more money in about a week with this one bundle than I have in my entire career on design bundles because I don't really promote on there. What I'm getting at is you need to be smart with your pricing. So in this case, I'm like, okay, for me to make $300, I would have to sell one file, you know, a hundred times, right? Or I can price this bundle at $6 and I don't have to do nearly as much work it sells a lot less and I make the same amount of money. So keep that in mind, right? So bundle pricing is very important. If you have sets of um, different designs, you definitely want to bundle those. So um, I have a mom bundle. I have a bunch of state bundles. I have a pregnancy milestone stickers bundles. I bundled up all of the nutrition facts um, that were totally different non-zodiac related. I have twin bodysuits, um, t-shirts, things like that. So one thing I am working on right now to increase sales in my shop, since I do have a lot of files, is build these bundles that are going to be value added for people that will increase your sales, okay? So we've gone over um, different programs to use, okay? Free and paid for, from the lower end of free to the higher end of paid for, okay? Now remember... A free program can turn out some really good stuff, but if you're paying premium price for a product, you can be cranking out some real good shiz, okay? Um, we went over designing. No trademark or copyright, okay? Keep a schedule of 
getting consistent content into your shop. Make sure your files are clean and be unique. All right. And then we went over um, packaging. Make sure you're zipping your files. Okay. And include different file types. And um, we went through branding. Okay. Went through branding. So make sure you are branding your uh, shop with a logo and the right color schemes. And here I'll post a little video about branding right there. If you go through my passive income bootcamp playlist, there's a bunch of good stuff to get you started. Um, and then also do not use any watermarks. Okay. And uh, mockups using mockups in your files. That's a good thing to do. Um, also pricing. Do not sell yourself short. Uh, price what you feel is comfortable. People will buy your stuff. Okay. You don't have to sell all of your files for $2 just because, um, you know, Jamie down the street is doing the same thing. Okay. Just keep that in mind. Um, and then bundles. If you can do it, if you have like 20 sets of something, just do it. Okay. Um, and that's it. Right. So uh, the other thing I want to talk about, and I'll post a, a link about my Etsy stats when I get it published on YouTube, but it's not going to happen overnight. Okay. You're not going to go and make a, a thousand gajillion dollars your first three months. You could, a lot of the times that's a fluke and it usually doesn't last. All I'm saying is that you need to be patient. Okay. You want to like, you're not going to see something like this happen, right? You're just not. So be patient. Um, just keep in mind that it does take work. This is a business. Okay, this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is not some, you know, I don't know, make money overnight thing. It's whatever work you put in, you're going to get out. And I guarantee if you continue to follow me that you will get there. Okay, it takes time. It takes dedication. It takes passion, blood, sweat and tears, man. There are some days that I was ready to throw my computer out the damn window. Sorry. <laughs> My thing now is I want to teach everybody to do what I'm doing. There's just so much horrible information out there, okay? And it's just these false things of, oh, look how I made all this money on Etsy overnight, and you can do it too. They forget to mention that this is not something that just happens, okay? You have to make it happen, and I can help you make it happen if you just listen to me. So that's all I have to go over. I, this was a lot longer than I anticipated it to be. Um, my webcam isn't in yet, so I'm using my phone to record. Hopefully this doesn't come out like poop. Uh, if you all have any questions about getting going, let me know. I will post a few video links in the description below. You can check out how to open your Etsy shop or, you know, there's uh, other videos on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, go ahead and click on that like and subscribe button below. That keeps me motivated to continue making these videos for all of you. And um, yeah, I'll catch y'all later.